Hello do-it-yourselfers, Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. So you've decided to join the EV revolution, and now you need to find a way to charge your car at home. In this video, I'm going to use the Vivor Level 2 EV charger. But there's a few things to take into consideration before making that commitment to an electric vehicle. What happens when the lights go out? Stay tuned and I'll answer that question of what do I do now? So before we get started, let's talk about EVs and the seemingly relentless push from the establishment to get us all on the EV bandwagon in the name of saving our planet from the evils of fossil fuel. I encourage you to do your research before you go all in on this trend. Now while I believe EVs can be a great choice for certain people with favorable circumstances that make EV use and ownership practical, I'm also enough of a critical thinker that I can come up with totally logical arguments against the practicality. We've all heard the big picture arguments presented from both sides. The veiled threats from climate alarmists that unless we change course, the continents are destined to slide beneath the oceans as the polar caps melt under the weight of excess CO2. And to the claims from the status quo, raising the obvious questions about where will the energy and the raw materials come from to build and power these electric vehicles? And at what cost? Is there anything to be gained? Again, do your own research, but in this video, let's talk about some very real and practical problems that going all in on EVs can present. So the first question that anyone should ask themselves before taking the EV plunge is, where am I going to charge my car? If you don't have the capacity at home to install the minimum of a level 2 charger at your place of residence, then you better be a very good planner so that you can time your slow 8 to 10 hour recharge off of a standard 15 or 20 amp dedicated household outlet. And what about your place of work? Do they have level 2 chargers for all the staff? Or do they provide dedicated outlets so you can plug in and top up the battery enough to get home? So after you've determined that yes, EV is for you and you can install a level 2 charger at home for a relatively quick recharge, here's another factor that's often overlooked. What happens in a prolonged power outage? It's not hard to imagine this happening because it does, and it's happened numerous times in the past, and it'll continue in the future. Be it a storm that takes out electrical infrastructure, an earthquake, tsunami, or God forbid the current ominous cloud of the threat of nuclear war that we're currently living under, with the conflict going on between Ukraine and the UN against the nuclear-armed Russian nation, all of these scenarios are something that's not far-fetched, and excluding the nuclear aspect, they have been experienced right here in my home of British Columbia, Canada. So where does that leave you when your EV is at 5% and you need to remove yourself from a dangerous situation or you need to get critical supplies or need to get to the hospital and the power is out? So my installation of an EV charger today is going to take place in my power wagon. Now this is a small trailer that I've converted into a power center for backup power in the case of an electrical grid interruption. The main component of this setup is a 10,000 watt peak, 8,000 watt gasoline powered generator inverter. I also have a 3,000 watt inverter powered by two 12 volt RV batteries for some quiet, convenient power to power some smaller loads for a prolonged period of time or some larger 120 volt loads for a short period of time. There's 200 watt solar panels that keep the batteries charged and ready to go when needed. And when the batteries run low, the generator can be started to take over the supply. The generator can also be connected to my house via a transfer switch panel and that'll power the critical circuits in my home or for any other place that power might be needed in a widespread outage. Full power for a 30 amp or 50 amp RV or any other emergency needs and in this video I'm going to add a level 2 EV charger that can quickly get your EV back up on the road when needed. So let's get started with this simple installation. I have a space here to mount the unit and it will simply plug into the provided 1450R outlet on the generator providing 40 amp peak and 33 amps continuous power at the 240 volt supply to power the Vivor EV charge station. And all mounted in this little utility trailer allows you to bring the power to wherever needed. And once that's completed we're going to do some testing with an EV to see how efficient the system works and how much of that dirty old gasoline it takes to get you back on the road. So here it is, the Vivor Level 2 charger that we'll be putting in the power wagon today and plugging into the generator. 
As I mentioned, it's an 11.5 kilowatt unit and we're plugging it into a continuous eight kilowatt generator. So we'll have to make the settings so that the maximum current matches that 8,000 watts that the generator puts out and that's about 33 amps. So we'll get into the settings of that when we get it all hooked up and ready to go. Vivor says tough tools, half price. This is your manual that comes with it. Let's go find a place to put this inside the power wagon and get started with the installation. All right, so I found a perfect place to mount this. It'll go right beside the solar array charge controller. Mount on this wood right here. It's got a simple mounting procedure, a bracket on the back with a set screw. Simply pull that out, pull off the back plate, measure, level, and screw that to the plywood. And then you put your unit back on and put the set screw back in place to hold it in place. Now the unit comes with a 1450P plug which is like a standard range plug to go into a standard range receptacle. That's a 50 amp, 125, 250 volt receptacle. Now let's get this mounted. We'll plug it in, power it up, get the proper settings into it. And then we will test it out on an actual EV and just see how we can efficiently charge up that vehicle, see how much gasoline it uses to get that EV back up and running and on the road in the event of a power failure. So there it is all mounted and in place, ready to go. We just got to plug it in, power it up, get the proper input settings into it. And then we need to test it out on a EV. Okay, so we're all ready to test the system. I've got a volunteer that brought his EV up to the house here. We're gonna plug it in, start this unit up, get the settings input correctly, plug in the charge gun and see how long it takes to charge this vehicle. It's sitting now at 48%. So we'll see what it takes to get it up to say 90%. So let's get started with that. The uh, owner of the vehicle did not want to be part of the video, nor did he want me to show his car or the settings or anything about it. So we'll leave that part out, but we'll go run this cord out now, get it ready to plug in and fire up the generator and then fire up the unit here, the Vivor level two charger. So let's get at it. All right, so just check that my plug is firmly inserted into the receptacle, the 1450P. 50 amp, 125, 250 volt receptacle on the Furman generator. So we're all set to go, ready to plug into the car. Let's fire up the generator. Turn on the fuel, flip the choke over, turn on the battery. Make sure the outlet is off, so the electrical is off right now. Turn on the switch. All right, so to summarize the installation of this Vivor Level 2 charger, which I hooked up to my generator in a backup configuration, took about two hours to charge that vehicle from 48% up to about 94%. I'm estimating around five to seven dollars worth of gasoline to do that. So all in all, I think that's a pretty successful experiment here. If you're ever out of power in an area for a prolonged period of time and you're all in on EVs, you might want to consider how you're going to recharge in the event of a power outage. This is a perfect solution. I'm not saying everybody should have a backup generator, but hey, it's not a bad idea, especially here. I've got this one set up. I can run my house through a transfer switch panel and I can charge up anybody's EV or should I choose to get one? I'm all set up to go. I can plug that thing into the house if I want to. I've got an outlet here for it or I can use the generator in the event of a prolonged power outage. So. Again, great idea to be prepared. Do your homework when you're looking to shop for an EV. Things to consider. I mentioned before, but one of the big ones is what are you gonna do if you're all in on EVs and you don't have a way to charge it in the event of a prolonged power outage. I can't emphasize that enough. 
It's happened before, it'll happen here again. Now I actually ran into an interesting phenomena too with trying to get a subject, a test subject to come here or I'd go to them and charge them up for free. I had three different individuals back out on me. Some concern over being operated from a power generator like we have it running here. Now that's about as silly as saying I don't get my beef from cattle, I get my beef from the grocery store. It's a generator is a generator, whether it's powering the grid up and, and being distributed all over your province or country and then transformed down to your usable power at your home or if the generator is right here in your yard and the unit is plugged into it. It has no idea where this generated power is coming from and it's good clean power at 60 cycles a second, 240 some volts as we've seen on the video. No reason at all to be concerned about this. So. What that tells me is that some people aren't really doing any homework or putting any thought process into jumping on the EV bandwagon just saying, hey, I'll get one of those, just plug it in and charge it up and away you go. But let's think about the things that can go wrong and plan for it. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching this review of the Vivor Tough Tools Half Price, the Vivor Level 2 Charger. Thanks for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Please make some comments below. Tell me what you think about this whole EV evolution. And make some comments, like, and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate that so very much. Thanks again for watching.